Hello and welcome, this is Ed Excel's M1 uh, January 2004 past paper. This is obviously question one. Um, what we've got here is obviously do, as we always have done, uh, draw the situation on the board. Uh, and we've got two trucks or trains or whatever it's specified, uh, blocks, particles, whatever. Okay, uh, and they are both travelling uh, in opposite directions, so obviously, in other words, towards each other. Um, and A has a speed uh, of 4 metres per second, whereas B has a speed of 2 metres per second. Uh, the mass of A is 600 kilograms, and the mass of B is what we're asked to find out in part A. Alright, um, we're also told that after the collision, both of them move um, together with a speed of uh, 0.5 metres per second. Okay, so the first thing that you would do in this question, before writing any calculations down, is uh, take a positive direction, and generally that positive direction is left to right. So therefore, um, A has an initial positive speed, whereas B's initial speed is actually negative. Okay, uh, that's because obviously velocity takes into account um, magnitude and direction because it is a vector. Okay, so that's why we put the negative in there, really. Um, and then obviously they both uh, go. Right, because uh, the direction of A we're told is unchanged, okay, so they both have a speed of 0.5 metres per second, that's what that crude attempt at uh, that is saying. Um, I've also put on the conservation momentum because that's essentially what how, how you answer most momentum questions, okay, such as this, or all of them, such like this, okay, right. So, obviously, what we've got to do is work out the mass of B. So, we're just going to follow this formula of momentum before equals momentum after. So, the total momentum before, okay, well, obviously, B is going to have a negative momentum here. A has the um, momentum of mass times velocity. Well, it's just uh, the mass of A, which is 600 kilograms, times the initial velocity, okay, which is obviously 4 metres per second. Uh, you could work it out, but I'm going to leave it unworked out. All right, uh, and then B, well, obviously, we've got... Um, uh, an, negative 2 metres per second times an unknown mass, so it's just times um, kilograms, okay? There's no point trying to simplify that down just yet. Okay, uh, and that's equal, well, they've both got a positive velocity now, okay? So it's obviously the mass of A, which is 600 kilograms, times 0.5 metres per second, plus the mass of B, which we know, we know is just known as m kilograms, times um, 0.5 meters per second. Okay, so now it's a case of simplifying this down. Well, obviously, um, 6 times 4 is 24, so you can just work it out. 2,400 kil kilogram meters per second. And I'm just going to simplify this next bit to um, minus 2m kilogram meters per second. Okay, and that is equal to, obviously, 600 times uh, 0.5 is obviously 300 uh, kilogram meters per second plus 0.5 m um, kilogram meters per second. Okay, so now it's just a case of rearranging it. It's key thing to distinguish that this is 2 m, 2 times m kilogram meters per second, and this is 0.5 times m kilogram meters per second because obviously we're going to be simplifying this down and trying to work out this value of m. Okay, so the first thing you would do is obviously um, subtract 300 kilogram meters per second from each side, so that obviously gets you 2,100 kilogram meters per second, and then we add 2 m kilogram meters per second, okay, to the both sides, which obviously gets us, if I can write it down correctly, uh, 2.5 m kilogram meters per second. And now, going back to that thing where I said this is now 2.5 times n, this is not just, um, uh, okay. So, therefore, what we do is we divide both sides by 2.5 kilogram meters per second, okay. And then, obviously, that would cancel down to give us um, a given value for m, all right. So, if we do that, obviously, what we'd have here is, obviously, 2,100 kilogram meters per second, over, sorry, and it's just over 2.5 meters per second, obviously, sorry, because we need the uh, m kilograms, all right, and if you work that out, just sub that in your calculator, you should get a value for m, which is uh, 840 kilograms, which you therefore would say, okay, well, that is therefore the mass of B, all right, 
we're just going to rub that out and put the true value, which is 840 kilograms. And logically, just by looking at it, uh, B should have a larger mass uh, than A because, well, it's going at a lower speed, and if B, A is going at twice the speed B is, but it only changes the velocity by, you know, two point two point five meters per second. Okay, whereas the impact on A is obviously a lot greater in terms of its velocity. It's slowed down. The velocity of A is reduced by 3.5 meters per second and the velocity of B is only increased by or changed even by 2.5 meters per second so therefore logically uh, A would have a smaller mass because obviously a smaller mass even though it must be going at a high velocity to cause the same change in velocity as I said you could just work it out logically by coming it with your own scenario such as this and obviously you would see a pattern where the larger mass obviously causes um, the greatest change in momentum because obviously momentum is mass times velocity so obviously you can change momentum by increasing the mass or, or increasing the velocity okay so hopefully you can kind of understand what's going on if it doesn't matter uh, if you don't get it if it doesn't matter uh, it doesn't matter if you don't get it you shut up now okay so that's part a even done with part b says find the magnitude of the impulse exerted on a in the collision okay so basically it's saying what was the ma so obviously um, we know that impulse is a change in momentum. Now, that's the first thing that I would state, okay? So, part B, I would say, the first thing is, uh, state that impulse is a change in momentum. It's, you don't have to write too much, it's just impulse equals delta momentum. Now, you don't have to do that, but it just shows uh, the examiner, okay, that you know what you're doing. Uh, and then, obviously, a change in momentum is quite easily calculated, obviously, by uh, momentum after. Uh, collision, uh, take the momentum before the collision or changing. And you would obviously continue that. Now, looking at the change in momentum um, exerted on A, okay, and if it's exerted on A, A has experienced the change in momentum. So, all we're really, all it's a fancy we've seen, uh, calculate the change in momentum of A. Okay, and it's gone from six, um, 2,400 kilograms per second um, to 300 kilogram meters per second. So, other way around, so I do apologise, I thought I got it wrong, which said the double shift mounts. Okay, so it's gone, it was initially um, 2,400 kilogram meters per second, and then it went to 300 kilogram meters per second. But because we were doing momentum after, take momentum before, we're obviously doing 300 kilogram meters per second. Take the 2,400 kilogram meters per second, which is obviously going to get us a negative momentum, okay, of negative 2,100. Don't be put off by the fact it is a, a negative number. Um, you would expect that because basically what that says therefore momentum has reduced and that's quite obvious really when A had, A, obviously A's mass hasn't changed but quite clearly we're told that the speed of that um, a truck or train or whatever it might be, uh, I wonder if you want to call it, I mean you could draw a fancy clown hat on it and call it um, the Joker but you know if you go on a shady darker side that's, that's fine. Um, Okay, as I said, that's quite logical. You wouldn't expect the momentum of A to decrease if, obviously, if the mass has changed. If the mass has remained the same, and obviously velocity has decreased, you would expect there to be a negative change in momentum. Now, for these questions of part B, where they say uh, impulse exerted on A by B, they could have added the words uh, change, uh, the impulse exerted on A by B, and your answer would have still been the same, because obviously the only thing exerting any force or any change in momentum for A is the block is this train B, okay? So it doesn't matter if it says, you know, the impulse exerted on A by B or the impulse exerted on A because obviously B is the only thing that is causing this impulse on A because as we know, impulse is a change in momentum and momentum is dictated by mass and velocity and as B is causing the, the change in A's velocity, therefore it's obviously having um, this effect. It's obviously exerting a change in momentum uh, hence a change in impulse, change in impulse, sorry, uh, impulse on A, okay, so don't get too confused about that, the wording of it is one of the main ways that people, um, uh, well, people, humans, idiots, uh, slip up on this question, okay, 
So really, it's just a case of um, I, I, even if you only stated these things, uh, the examiner knows what you're talking about. I don't necessarily get any marks for it. Uh, I mean, I think you do, but I don't want to say something and it'd be wrong. Um, and the main thing of this part is obviously not to get too worried that it's a negative number because, as I've explained, obviously we wouldn't have a positive change in momentum. In other words, we wouldn't have an increase in momentum for a decrease in velocity, assuming the mass stays constant, which obviously we do. Okay, so thanks for watching. Um, as I said, it was quite a nice and easy momentum question, standard one that you might see. The only real difficulty is maybe sort of um, understanding the wording. Uh, of part B, but that's nothing too too much really, it's just English and um, I stopped that years ago, I started speaking French now, or, or gibberish or whatever language I speak, I don't know, half the time. Uh, anyway, so thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.